so that's where we are now i know there are lots of um comments asking me um you know where moses is so i'm not in jamaica at all he's in jamaica um and i think right now he's also at his family home in saint elizabeth which is where the funeral was so some persons were also concerned because they got some news today that the police wanted to see him because of some party thing that i think to the best of my knowledge has been sorted um i spoke to them earlier today and everything seemed like it was fine so up to this point everybody's okay and everybody's good so we're really grateful for that um i'm just live you know i was sharing at the start of this live that something happened to me a week ago um it was a near-death experience when I say near-death I mean like within an inch of my life got in a car accident and I was completely shaken up because of how close I came to actually dying and I say this all the time that recognizing our mortality is sometimes the gas and the energy that we need to figure out what the meaning of life is and what the purpose is um, for us being here on earth what really matters and what just don't matter and that experience and I, it's still hard for me to talk about it without like my hand shaking because I have a literal flashback of the car just going boom and I'm just like I, I still can't process how I survived that without a scratch like i don't have any marks no bump my head my sh nothing at all and it's something i haven't spoken about outside of a very 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 teeny tiny small 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 group of people only because it just gives me like a uh, you know like just to say it brings me back into the moment and i just feel like anxious all over again but as I'm finishing the year in these last 15 minutes of 2020, I just want to come on to share with you how important it is to just focus on what matters. My year has been a year that a lot of people get to see everything. Everything that's important to me and everything that I'm, you know, experimenting at, trying at, aiming at, succeeding at, not winning elections at. But it's also frontline and that can be overwhelming because it's almost as if you don't get any privacy to process the great things that happen and the not so great things that happen but i've gotten to a point now where i can honestly say to you nothing nothing else matters but living true to my purpose that's the only focus that's the only thing that's compelling that's the only thing that just has the kind of magnet and pull and vibration that i'm engaged with right now and just to see how unimportant so many other things were i am just shocked that i would have spent so much time and energy you know working on particular projects trying to build and create things and then in the moment when the life flash before your eye is one question come on my mind one question come to my mind but what will i leave behind for my daughter that was it like what foundation is she going to build on what legacy have i created that she can stand on and do whatever she wants to do purpose 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 as long as i stay true to answering the call of purpose that question will be answered just naturally because fulfilling the purpose is the legacy doing my job crystal's job the one thing that only i can do and doing it with a sense of purpose and a commitment to excellence will lay a strong enough foundation for her. 
So when you know I got out of the car, checked myself, realized that you know body is still here, legs still are move, no bleeding. The only thing is that I'm just, just disoriented because I can't believe what just happened. Giving thanks that Zia was not in the car because she was home. I mean, after processing all of that, the next thing in my head was, so what you there for do, right? Because God just gave a second chance to do the things then, where you there for do. And that's why I'm so passionate. I've always been passionate about purpose. But in the last week, you may have seen a lot of content on my page just talking about designing this plan, envisioning this, this life, committing to answering to whatever that purpose is, and just staying focused and getting it done. There is noise on the sidelines. We know this because we're not on the sidelines, right? When you are in the arena, when you're standing in the ring, when you're on the track, when you're the one doing the dirty work, you get to hear what everybody else has to say about what you're doing and how you're doing it. But is you alone on the track? Is you alone running that lane? Is you alone in that match? You have to stand up and fight. And the minute you take your eye off of what is in front of you, the journey, the goal, the mission, the lane, the opponent, and do so for say, uh, what do you say? Um, what I want to want? Uh, what do you think we for do? You might get knocked out in the ring, but you definitely lose your advantageous position of being focused. That's what you miss. The position of advantage you're in by being focused. So there's a video I had shared, and it's actually one of my followers. Um, his name online is Mr. President Austin. I think 87 is at the end. But he always kind of pulls together some of my older videos that I didn't like, 2017, 2018, 2019. Videos that are buried way down on my page. I don't know how him find them. And he shares them. And he shared that one about us focusing on our opportunities. What do we have to do? Why is it important that we do this thing and stop watch what other people are do, what them not do, what them get, what them don't get, or them are win, or them are lose. The minute you take your eye off of your blessing, your opportunity, your seed, your garden, your flower, you lose the advantage that comes with focus. Because when you focus on your thing and you're doing you, you're doing the ordained, purpose-driven thing, you get caught in a flow, right? Me, hi, chick sent me, hi, he calls it um, a state of flow. Whereas like everything else gets lost, time gets lost, and you just start work on your thing, work on your thing. You're never hungry again. You're not no tired again. You don't know what a clock a strike again. It's like you're deaf, you can't hear nothing. You're just focused and in flow. But that only comes when you keep your eye in your lane and on your business. So that for me, as chilling as the experience was, was such a blessing. Just to be reminded that I am covered. I'm God's child and I'm ordained to be here and a mistake might be there. So whoever pray bad over me, whoever don't want to see good things for me, whoever would be happy to hear say, boy, that day was the last day for me. It can't happen that way there. And a God planned that and a God story that. And even if I was starting to feel unsure and fatigued and tired and I wonder, Lord, what is, you know? Should I continue? Am I doing the right thing? Jesus have mercy. What go on? That moment reminded me that I am where I am, doing what I'm doing because I have a job. And it not fulfill yet. My time not up yet. The journey not done yet. But I also don't have all the time in the world. And in that moment, I realized that I can't itch and I drag my foot. Right? I can't delay and I procrastinate and I move like, say, I'm not certain and sure. Because if I'm doing the thing that I'm supposed to do, I have to hurry up and do it. Right? I can't do peace sight, One foot in, one foot out. Left hand in, right hand out. One eye in, one next and over here, do something. I have to stay focused. So, my word for the year is usually something I 
I, I choose later on in the new year, like maybe by mid-January. But for now, I know what the words are. It's purpose and it's focus. So I'm asking you, seven minutes left in 2020, think about what your life has been whispering to you and what it's been telling you to do and not to do. If you are in a space of uncertainty, just sit in the stillness, pray about it, and listen when you get an answer. Don't resist the answer when it comes. Sometimes the answer is uncomfortable. Sometimes the answer calls you to question everything you believe and everything you thought, you know, you knew and wanted and was sure about. But prayer is that kind of experience where you have to just get naked, just, just take off all of the expectations, all of the plans, all the things that you want to do. And just ask the creator to make clear what your path is. What is your next step? What do you need to do right now? What is the best use of your talent? Best use of your skill? Best use of your time? Best use of your focus and your energy? And listen for that answer. And when you get the answer, don't resist it. Don't resist it. I have been praying for maybe two months now for some clarity, you know, because coming out of a, a year almost of just heavy politicking, campaigning, community work. You know, you got lost in all of that, just digging, 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 making sure that you had um, a strong foothold to prepare for elections. Everything else got put on the side burner, like all the other things that I was working on, all the things I was passionate about and wanted to build and see them grow. I had, because I, I don't have enough hands. I can't do all that at one time. And so now that that period has passed, I'm looking at all the plans on people and I'm like, which one? What to do? What is next? What is the purpose? Like, show me something. Tell me something. And I've been praying and praying and praying and just listening and listening and watching and watching. I'm like, yo, where the answer day? In that moment, there were so many answers. Um, and I just feel so elevated and encouraged and a part of me is also a little anxious because it's a lot of newness required. But girl, ready? Because God have my back. So even if it is new and different and strange and I don't know how to do all of it, I know I'm going to learn. If it's one thing about Crystal, she learn. Right? If I don't know how to do it when I start, best believe that while I'm figuring it out, I'm learning and taking notes. So, purpose and focus. I spoke a lot about purpose. A week ago yeah I think a week ago two Sundays ago so you can check out my IG TV post the most recent one I believe where I was talking about Romans 8 and how clarifying and, and elucidating that particular verse is for me um, and just a, a, like a quick fast pass into it it says all things are working together for the good of them who love God and are called to his purpose. So if I believe that all things are working together for my good, I can't get anxious when things go bad. I'm not going to get afraid and scared and timid when I say one plus one and equal two yet, right? I say one plus one and equal one and a half. I say that equal one and three quarter. I say the two are come, but it shall arrive because all things are working together. Not some things, not piece of the things, not part of the things. All of the things are working together for the good of them who love God and are called to his purpose. So after praying for that clarity of purpose and direction, um, those, those answers started coming in. And I'm just a humble myself, you know, and watching God work in my life because a lot of things that I did not think were possible have happened. A lot of successes and W's I get them like only my, my close friends would know like some of the wins that even while I work on it I say yo this can't mm -mm -mm. this not gonna happen but I just try you know I just I do my best right I do my best but I think that it's like a work and it work and sometimes like we're just in whatsapp screaming like oh my god it happened but when you here's the arm at me when you are called and answer to the purpose you're justified and glorified and i'm seeing a lot of the justification i'm seeing a lot of the glory happening right now and there's even more to come because this is just the beginning
So I want to assure, reassure anybody right now who's looking at 2021 and not feel the vibe like I said. I would people are going so far, but they must say bye bye to 2020. Like, me don't know what I'm going to do at 2021. What is over there? Me don't know. Me don't know if I'm ready. Me don't know if I want it. Right? Me, me can't take one more day out of 2020 for just kind of prepare myself for 2021. Like, guys, hold on. Me not, me not sure. Right? So, like, 2021 hype. I'm being unsure if me ready for the hype. For anybody who is feeling like that, anybody at all, I'm encouraging you to just sit in the stillness. If that stillness is meditation, if that stillness is prayer, if that stillness is silence, just sit in it and listen for your answers because it's there. Connect with the, with the creator, connect with that life-giving energy and the answers are gonna come to you in a language that you will understand. And after that um, near-death experience of me, of my ears open wide, wide, clean out, right? I'm very airing now, um, and just certain that I am covered and I am meant to be here, and nothing is happening accidentally, and nothing is happening by buck ups. It's an ordained, God-designed process. I mean, about that God for stand up in my way and tell Him, say, no, I'm not ready for this yet. Mm -mm. I have to just humble myself and ease back. So, it's officially midnight, at least where I am. And I want to say cheers to 2021 to you and yours. Happy, happy new year to you. You have done what thousands worldwide were not able to do. Whether because of a life, a car accident, COVID-19, violence in them community. Them just never make it cross the finish line here. But you have. And it's not by mistake. So stand in that and just allow it to bless you. Allow that blessing to really feel like an honor. Because it is. You are here and you have an opportunity now to do something. Do something for the next year that you didn't get a chance to do this, this past year. On Sunday, I'm going to be hosting... Um, a live session it's part of my um, life on purpose mastermind so for the next 12 months I'm gonna be working with a group of you once you're registered me and you we are accountability partners we are going to set those goals with the audacity right as if 2020 never show we say something's impossible we're stepping into 2021 telling 2020 that we don't believe it right it's in our trouble the lesson them where did one we learn we not learn it because we're not gonna get to me that we're not gonna get scared we're still going to paint big beautiful visions for our lives because the god always serve big and beautiful too and the same way on connect the dots to them in a difficult year that nobody was prepared for you can imagine oh we're gonna connect the dots to them in another one year after we get the test run and we do the test drive and we, we figure out the little pieces and parts of 2020 we're ready for 2021 and that's not a question for me I know I am ready, not because I know what is going to happen, not because I have all the answers, but because I have all I need. And all I need is the courage that comes from my Creator. I am pour that in my spirit every morning. But there are a couple of things that we're going to have to let go, including myself. Some things that we're going to have to release if we're going to increase the positive experiences and the blessings and the joy in 2021. And those things include, first and foremost, these expectations that people are going to cheer for you all the time. Let me tell you something. There are some people in this world who don't want to see nothing good happening in your life. And you cannot expect them people that will wish bad for you and pray bad prayer over your life to turn around and clap for you when things are going right. No. They stand up in one corner with name Boo. Right? That is the only thing that them are going to do. Them over the corner will say Boo. A one cue them know and uh when it look like him a drop down you know say boo when it look like she got tumble down you know say boo. when it look like say that's something that say boo when it look like say the say um, at the boo corner them there right them not in the cheer corner no time them not come with no pam pam mm -mm. them come with the worst words for say to discourage you when you're planning this this next step this next level in your life you have this business where you want to start you have this 
trip where you want, go pan, you have this degree where you want, do you have this investment where you want, make you have this family where you want, start whatever it is that you may want to invest in. You have a dedicated corner of people who are just going to boo. And you have to stop expect them to say yay. Them never learned a part of the language day, right? A one word them them been a practice for the last umpteen years and it's boo you. So you have to decide where you're looking for the affirmation, where you're looking for the justification, where you're looking for the glory because we keep looking in the wrong places and we keep allowing the voices of people who never cheered us on before, right? We keep allowing those voices to direct us. Like, what if we're gonna let that go? That need for approval and that need for a big loud team that is always there and maybe a team that is louder than the detractors and the naysayers. Some of us will never ever have that. Some of us will only have one friend who mean us well. Two sisters who always have a back. Three brothers from high school who dead fear no matter what. Count them up. If I them six people alone you have in your corner, you have all them six people. Share your vision with them. Take the guidance from them. Share your fears and your concerns with them. And when they start to cheer for you, just tell yourself, say that you have. And don't look to hear from two, 200 and 2,000. For now, you have six. And those are six honest voices that believe in you and want to see you win. Draw them close. But release this expectation that everybody's going to be happy for you when you're doing the best thing for you. Everybody's going to be happy for you when you're taking things to another level, when you're, you're, you're moving into a new space and into a new zone, when you're taking a risk on yourself and your business idea and whatever other ideas you have. That's not a guarantee. And you have to be okay if sometimes you're the only person who believes in what you have to do. You have to just be okay with that. Somebody says eagles can't take flying lessons from chickens. And I don't know how we are trying to do. Like, who now fly? We make them a tell we how oh, I we can fly. Hello? I ain't never come off a ground yet. Bye. Right? Bye bye. <laughs> so, yes, I bye So, really? Right? It's, it's gonna hold you back. It went forever hold you back. The other thing that, ooh, the, 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 um, fireworks is what I was gonna say. The fireworks are going off. Where was I? Yes. The other thing that we have to let go is a feeling of unforgiveness. There's a space that we have to enter that requires that we love ourselves unconditionally. There can be no room in our spirit for us to doubt ourselves and doubt our worthiness. So you see, all we you never know before and the mistake them where you make and you have up your selfie like you're carrying around. Release that guilt. Let it go. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and give yourself the freedom to drop some of the anchors and move a little lighter into your next phase. You don't have to be perfect to stand in your purpose. You don't have to be perfect to stand in your purpose. You just have to be present, like be in the here and now, not living in the what coulda, shoulda, woulda been, what used to, what never used to, what you did, what you never do, where you get right, where you get wrong. You can't be over back there, so, and stand in your purpose. You have to be present. You don't have to be perfect. You have to be present. So forgive yourself for whatever you didn't know, whatever you got wrong, whatever never work out, we are human beings and we're trying to figure this life out as we go. And if you wait on perfect, you will never start. So forgive yourself and then forgive others. My mother used to tell me, it takes a lot of energy to don't like people. Like you have to remember when you see them, say you don't like them and you fix with them. If you smile and they come, you have to stop smiling. Car. Yeah, I don't want to smell it. I don't smell it. Yeah, if you are 
going left and you see them come left too you either start walk a little harder right if i change all your walk i change the direction all together to avoid them <laughs> it takes a lot to remember that you don't like somebody it takes a lot to remember that you will not you have not forgiven someone it take a whole leap out of you because it hangs in your spirit and it hangs in your consciousness and you are the one that's kept on the hook so you think that if you don't forgive them yeah them dip on punishment no them in a detention because me not forgive them yet sometimes they don't even say i've been up one but two is you alone have to suspend that in your spirit and that takes up space as you're moving into a new year you have to free up some space for some good things right the bad things them were in your in your spirit you have to let them out so some good things can come in because the two can't coexist you can't have envy and i tell people say you're full of gratitude it no work so you can't have hate and i tell people say you're full of love it no work so you have to let go in order to create space for new things better things so forgiveness of the them whoever them happen to be because we know the people that we have up we will not let them not apologize yet they must say sorry yet so we still vex create some space in your spirit and forgive yourself for whatever you didn't get right you have to let yourself off the hook because we are learn as we go and carrying a sense of guilt and unworthiness into your purpose into your present means that you're going to make decisions based on a feeling of guilt yeah you think you're guilty and so you're going to make decisions that help you to feel a little less guilty so you're trying to overcompensate and it will cause you to not make the very best decision so you have to forgive yourself it's a requirement and a prerequisite to stand in your purpose to just believe that despite all you've gone through you are still worthy of good you are still worthy of love you are still worthy of success you are still worthy of peace you're still worthy of more and too many of us think that we became unworthy when we made those mistakes and it's not true i want to tell you it is not true um I'm, I'm wondering if I should save this live because I know a lot is going on in the background with the fireworks and the television from ZZ watching it. Um, I haven't made up my mind yet. Probably I will. But I just wanted to be on with you in these early, early minutes of 2021 to let you know that you are loved and you are worthy and you are deserving and you are a beautiful warrior. Yeah? Not a delicate flower that every wind will pass that will blow you down and pop down the tree. You're a beautiful warrior. Um, Good Skins is asking if I've ever read The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I haven't, but it's on our book list for our 2021 um, Life on Purpose Mastermind. So if you want to be a part of that, if you're looking for a way to compassionately review your year, look at all that you have done. If you if, if you want to join it's something I do every year I sit down for at least two hours and I just look at the year that has passed the seasons I've had the successes I've had the failures I've had what they've taught me what they mean to me what they teach me about myself what they teach me about people in my life what they teach me about my ability to make decisions who I am rests in the lessons of how I treated myself treated others treated relationships in the year that has gone and my friend Rasheen um, Robinson sent me a voice note this morning to say that it's it's data you know you're collecting data so don't be afraid to look back at your life and a lot of us will feel terrible because everything never work out like we didn't have some big pretty plan and the plan they never work we never see the success what we think we're gonna see we never see the perfect outcomes that we, we were looking for the vision board god bless it it step on the wall or step on the dresser and half of the sitting them we just have to go peel them off and paste them for the next one because it just never happened and you can feel guilty about that oh hi katie i absolutely will share some information on the um, public speaking course we're actually in cohort two now but we're going to do a third cohort um 
for end of January. So we'll start advertising end of January. It will begin in the first week of February. So we do have something coming up um, this month. Oh, we're, we're in 2021. So I almost said next year, right? Um, so yes, we do have something coming up in 2021. In, in January. So as early as January, you'll hear about it. Um, where was I? Yes. Looking back compassionately at your year. Seeing what you got right. Celebrating that. Honoring that. Feeling good and proud of yourself. And seeing the things that we did not get right. But being compassionate. It's so important how you talk to yourself and how you treat yourself when you fail. You'll have enough people that are looking and pointing and say, oh, you failed because you're a horrible person, you're terrible, and you didn't deserve the opportunity. They will do that. You don't need to join them. What you need is to develop a compassionate self-talk tape in your head that even when things don't go the way they should go, you know, your work or the business plan, you say, yeah, we're going to launch this stuff, and we're going to have the product ready, and then we're going to go to market, and then 35 people are going to order, and then we're going to just make a million dollars in one week, and it never works. Okay, okay, doesn't mean that you're going to shut down the business. Let's take a deep breath. What about it? Made it impossible to make a million dollars in a week. And think through compassionately, honestly, because you can't lie to yourself. Think about it honestly. But be compassionate. Don't throw the judgment and the coulda and the shoulda all over yourself. To say, oh, you know, you're imperfect in this way and unworthy because of these things. Because that will only diminish your confidence in self and the level of worthiness that you show up with. And we can't sacrifice for worthiness. So another critical part of preparing yourself for success is preparing yourself for failure. Me no know who in this life reap success in anything, anything at all, without some amount of failure. And the bigger the failure is the bigger the success because it means you're taking more risks, you stand to lose so much more. So people who fail big in life are usually going at some very big goals so whatever the goals are that you may be thinking through for this year for 2021 part of preparing for the success of those goals is being willing to experience some failure and i want to say to you what i say to myself and what i say to many other people when they get to that space of not wanting to take a risk because they might fail not wanting to do something because people are looking at it and critiquing it and judging it and people are cheering for you to not be successful at it so you just don't bother do it because it's easier you know like what if it don't work and then everybody see you are not your failures they don't define you you are not your success either they don't define you you are potential and every day you're getting up and deciding how do I want to use my potential? How do I want to maximize this power, this talent, this skill that I have? What risks am I gonna take? What do I give up in order to gain? How do I serve in order to win? And sometimes you serve and you win. Sometimes you serve and you don't win. But remember, you're not your wins and you're not your failures either. You are the potential. So you have to see the potential in yourself to do exceedingly great things. Believe in your capacity to do it. Believe in your ability to do it imperfectly. Learn in the imperfection of it. And still enjoy the journey and the process. Because it's just a requirement. Life is asking us, are you willing to fail though? Everything where you get up for do, there's an option and an opportunity to fail at it. Everything. So unless you plan to sit down and don't move, we have to look at failure as one of the, the gateways to success. And it's something I write about in my book, Kill Fear, The Art of Courageous Living, how the fear of failure prevents us from doing big, beautiful things with our lives and our talent. We waste time, we procrastinate, we delay, we tell ourselves we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, and miss the opportunity to do something great. Don't let that fear stop you. 
especially when that experience has the power to redirect you. Um, Terry Carell is one of my, she's an online mentor for me, but like a real life person that I can take up the phone and call and talk to. And she talks about that too, about failure being redirection. So you don't have to see it as evidence that you must not try anything, evidence that you, you mustn't take a risk, you mustn't invest in this way. Failure is sometimes redirection. So take the risk, take the chance, try it and see how it goes. And if it don't work out the way you had it planned on paper or in your spirit, just see what lessons are there that can direct you on a better path and a better way to do these things. Um, the book is titled Kill Fear, The Art of Courageous Living and it's available on Amazon. It's available on Amazon. Um, so you can actually go on and purchase it now. And there may be some copies if you're in Jamaica in Mega Marts. I'm willing to check to make sure the shelves are restocked um, in, in case they're out. So Mega Mart has branches on Waterloo um, in Portmore, in Mandeville, and in Montego Bay. So if you're in any of those four parishes, I did say Waterloo, and Waterloo is not a parish, but you know I mean Kingston and St. Andrew. <laughs> Portmore is not a parish either, but you know I mean St. Catherine. Mandeville is not a parish, but you know I mean Manchester. Montego Bay is not a parish, you know I mean St. James. So if you're in any of those parishes and cities um, or close by, um, especially because Mega Mart is not in every single parish, you can hop over. We can give them a call too just to make sure that it's there. It's actually in the pharmacy inside um, Mega Mart. But if, if they don't have a copy, you can always get it online. T Hodge 12, thank you so much. Let me know when you get it. My email address is on the back of the book. Send me an email and we'll give you a reading prompt that helps you to go through the book and do your own reflections on how fear might be stopping you from investing and taking a chance on whatever that next chapter and that next level is for you. So thank you for asking and I really hope that you'll get a chance to order it and to read it. Um, last year it was on my book list for, I do an annual book list and share it on my page. So last year I had put the book on the book list. This year, funny enough, it's not on there and I'm wondering why I didn't put it on there. Hmm, need to go and edit that book list. But <laughs> it's available to anybody who is registered for my Life on Purpose Mastermind 12-year um, program. We go live this Sunday with our end-of-year life assessment um, session. Excuse me. And then from there on, we move into the, the envisioning exercises, your vision board, building out the right kinds of habits to hit high performance markers and just get the right things done in life, the things that really matter to you, getting them done on time and with the hallmark of excellence, as I like to say. Um, but a big part of getting to your visioning stage is understanding your purpose. So we're gonna be walking you through in the month of January, how to identify what that purpose is, what that fulfilling experience and passionate investment of time could be for you. And then in February, we're going to have uh, an online brand strategist join us in our monthly live sessions because we're having a, a live coaching session every single month. February's live coaching session is going to be on monetizing on your digital platforms and finding different ways to earn because COVID-19 taught us that nine to five can be the only way that you earn. We knew this all along, right? We've been reading some books and they told us, but it amplified it and made it so urgent. So in, in February, we're gonna sit down um, with a brand strategist and a, a content creator to come up with ways to build your online audience, monetize digitally, come up with products, come up with tools that can serve the audience that you are suited to serve because all of us have people who we can serve. And the more you serve is the more value you bring to people's lives, is the more you will be able to earn because people pay you for value. If you're not adding value, they're not gonna get them money. So if you're looking for ways to earn in 2021, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, well, what is the value that I can offer, right? What is the service that I can offer? How can I help people to solve a problem? And we're gonna be walking through that with you. So if you'd like to join me, um, click the link in my bio. I'm gonna end this live in a second because ZZ is getting a little fussy. My back has been turned to her the whole time and she wants some attention. Um, and she's a late sleeper. Don't worry, guys. She went to sleep this evening at like 5 p.m. and got up back at 7.30. So, you know, she have energy 
to ring in the new year. Um, but I think she's getting a little tired now. Um, and I want to be able to put her to bed, you know, peacefully. Because she's not going to sleep right now. She's not going to sleep right now. So, again, Happy New Year, everybody. And may you release what you need to release spiritually and emotionally to create space for the increase that you've been praying for. Listen in the stillness. Listen to your life for the clarity and the, the vision and the purpose that will move you passionately through 2021. Life not easy. 2020, teach you that. But it not will be easy for us to live well. We just have to be present and on purpose and diligent and consistent in doing the right things. So I'm looking forward to sharing with um, my purpose posse on Sunday. And I'll be doing a lot more in terms of serving my online community with more content, with more information on just how to manage life mentally, emotionally and spiritually. So you show up as your best self, not because life is perfect, but because you're choosing to be present and purposeful through all of its seasons. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending the first 25 minutes of 2021 with me. It has been an honor and a pleasure. Thanks for being a part of my community. Thank you for being like real online warriors for me. Because I know some things go on sometime online. Me not even see it. I mean, somebody just hear and say, Hey, your, your fans are over this side. Your friend over this side. Hey. So even on those things, I want to say thank you. Because you all defend me in spaces where I don't even know I need to be defended. So I appreciate the love and I appreciate the support. And I appreciate how you show up for me. And I'll continue to show up for you guys. Thank you. Love always and blessings to you. Happy New Year.